Hey folks, this is Kalani. I can't help but think we've always been busy this expansion. Not only did we get the new raid and Taurus, but patch 7.3.5 went up on the PTR. This patch includes some story progression in Silithus after Sargeras gave us a new landmark to remember him by, the new leveling experience with world scaling being applied to all of the old zones, and an introduction to the allied races system which was announced at BlizzCon. There's a new emissary building in both Stormwind and Ogremar where the faction leaders are gathered around. Four of the six allied races that we know of are being introduced here. Trallian is asking Anduin to pursue a friendship with the Lightforged Draenei, while Illyria is bringing the Void Elves to the table on the Alliance side. Lady Liadrin is trying to get Sylvanas to bring the Nightborn into the fold, while Bane is making his case for the High Mountain Tauren to join the Horde. It seems like even though the allied races were announced for the Battle for Azeroth expansion, we might actually get access to these four races during patch 7.3.5, or we might at least start the process to completing the requirements to make these races ourselves. There is an achievement tied to each allied race which is basically just completing the story quests for bringing that allied race into to your faction. After you complete the quests and gotten the achievement, you'll be able to create the allied races as playable characters. Whether we get access to that during 735 or whether we have to wait for Battle for Azeroth, we're not too sure, so we'll have to wait and see. What we do know is that each of these allied races comes with new racial abilities, a whole bunch of character customization options, a dressing room background, a new race specific mount, and some really cool race specific transmog sets. So that's what we're going to have a look at. Let's start with the Void Elves because everyone seems to be really excited about the Void Elves. They have some really interesting looking racials. Chill of Night reduces arcane and shadow damage taken by 1%. Entropic Embrace gives your abilities a chance to empower you with the Essence of the Void, which might relate to their Void form and not actually have any combat power, because if this racial had combat power, that would probably be overpowered. Ethereal Connection reduces the cost of Void Storage and Transmog by 50%, which is hilarious. You have a little deal with the Ethereals, apparently. Preternatural Calm makes it so your spells are not delayed from taking damage, which is actually kind of ridiculous. I thought Rachels weren't going to have any significant power, but that's pretty strong for casters. And Spatial Rift rips a rift in space and time, and you can reactivate the ability to teleport through the rift, which to me sounds very much like a Warlock portal. Place it down and reactivate to teleport to it. That's pretty crazy to have as a racial ability too, so Void Elves are definitely shaping up to be a strong race to choose. So when it comes to character creation, the Void Elves get something very special. Their hair can glow. It seems like we'll have quite a few options for glowing hair, so that's really exciting. It's cool to see something new like this being implemented, just like the Demon Hunter tattoos for the start of Legion. There's a lot of different options you can play with, both males and females have quite a selection of hairstyles, but it seems like you'll be stuck with pinkish purpley skin and hair no matter what. I'll give you a link to Wowhead's new post with a bunch of pictures so you can peruse at your own leisure. The dressing room background for the Void Elves is, as you might expect, quite purple. It looks like a planet which might have been taken over by the Void, which is probably where the Void Elves want to be. They also have a race-specific mount, and seeing as they're more or less Blood Elves, it makes perfect sense that an Alliance race gets to run around on our beloved Chocobos. I mean, Hawkstriders. That Void Hawkstrider does look pretty sweet though. This is the Star-Cursed Void Strider, and might be one of the reasons players decide to create a Void Elf. It is a very pretty mount. The Void Elves Heritage Arm set is one you've probably seen a lot with those huge Void Wings on the back. It's definitely a very cool set, if not a little skimpy on both the female and the male versions. It seems like Void Elves just love to show off their torsos. I like the purple base colour with the gold trim, it fits the Void Elves very well. I wonder if people will ever drop the Void Wings and the armour piece they're tied to, which is probably the shoulders. I could imagine people just using those and forming other sets around them because they look pretty awesome. I wonder how the Battle for Azeroth sets will match up to these Heritage armour sets too. Moving on to the other Alliance race, the Lightforged Draenei are basically a holier version of the Draenei we can already play, which kind of begs the question of who will play a regular Draenei when you can play the super special Draenei? Seems like a no-brainer. Let's have a look at their racials first. They have Light's Judgment, which is basically Light's Judgment from Argus. Call down a strike of holy energy, dealing holy damage to enemies within 5 yards after 3 seconds. Has a 40 yard range and a 2.5 minute cooldown. You can call down a holy nuke laser on a short cooldown. That's pretty cool. They also have Forge of Light, which allows them to blacksmith anywhere in the world. They also gain 10 blacksmithing skill. 
Demon Bane increases experience gains from killing demons by 20%, so I expect Lightforged Draenei will level very quickly through Outland and through the Legion content. Holy Resistance reduces holy damage taken by 1%, and Final Verdict will deal damage to any enemies around you as well as heal any allies around you when you die. I can see the Paladins and Priests just begging to race swap already. So the Lightforged Draenei also come with something a little special. They can have holy tattoos across their body. There's quite a few variations to choose from, and they all look pretty awesome. Once again, I'll link you to a Wowhead page with a whole bunch of pictures, and the Wowhead dressing room actually supports Lightforged Draenei, so you can play about with that to see all the variations we have access to. Once again, the hair and skin colours do seem to be quite limited, but maybe it's because we don't have access to everything yet. The dressing room background seems to be the Vindicar, or at least something very similar, which makes a lot of sense when you consider they were a part of the Army of Light before joining the Alliance. Their racial mount is another elephant, but it's a holy infused elephant with some awesome armor to boot. There's also little holy symbols on the back which look a lot like the holy fragments that we used to empower the Netherlight Crucible. The Lightforged Draenei Heritage Armor looks kind of like you stole it from Turalyon, which I'm perfectly happy with. It's what you would expect coming from a member of the Army of Light, but what's interesting is that the Lightforged Draenei actually have four different colours of their Heritage Armor set, and it's the only race with more than one set currently. That means we might see some more achievements tied to different Heritage Armor colours, which could be really exciting. They even seem willing to go as far as changing the entire colour scheme for the entire set, as we can see with the purple armor. I wonder how we'll get our hands on these variations, but I can definitely see Lightforged Draenei Paladins wanting to rock this set above of all others. Moving on to the Horde races, we have the Nightborn. I'm still undecided between playing a Nightborn or playing a Xandalari Troll. If we get the Nightborn in 735 and have to wait for Battle for Azeroth to play Xandalari Trolls, that might just decide for me. Let's start with the racial abilities again. We have Ancient History, which increases your Inscription skill by 15. Arcane Infinity, which increases magical damage by 1%, which might not sound like a lot, but that could be pretty powerful. Cantrips allows you to conjure a mailbox out of thin air. Engineers better watch out, you're being replaced slowly but surely. Dispel Illusions allows you to draw upon your arcane sight to pierce illusions and invisibility within 15 yards, and if you don't say, an illusion, what are you hiding? When you cast it, I will be severely disappointed. There's also Magical Resistance, which reduces all magic damage taken by 1%, and Masquerade, allowing you to take on the appearance of any other Nightborn. I wonder if you can steal Grand Magistrix's appearance, because that would be pretty awesome. Those racials seem really fun all in all, but nothing too overpowered or broken. The Nightborn don't seem to have any glowing hair or light tattoos or anything really too special, but they do have pretty large ears if that counts for anything. The play models look really good, I worried we might end up with something a little meh compared to the Nightborn models we had seen throughout Legion, but they hold up really well. You get quite a few hairstyle choices, but hair colours seem very limited right now. Skin tones seem a little varied at least, but again, this could just be an early representation of what the finished product could look like. I'll add another link for the Nightborn in the comments below so you can peruse at your own leisure. The dressing room background is Suramar. Obviously, I don't think anywhere else would have really worked. It's a nice shot of Suramar, and I'm really excited to see if the Nightborn there will interact with you differently at all. We do know that the Nighthold and maybe parts of Suramar will be used as a Horde hub, so that's really cool. The racial mount the Nightborn will have access to is the Nightborn Mana Saber, which looks like a slight variation on the Mana Saber we can already ride. This one has different armor, but still looks cool, so it will be a nice addition nonetheless. The Nightborn Heritage Arm set looks very typical of what you'd expect from the Nightborn, and that's pretty fantastic. Their extravagant armor with the pinks and purples was why the Nightborn looked so freaking cool the first time we saw them in Legion. The orbs in the shoulders and the feathers adorning the entire thing are nice, and the entire thing really just says Nightborn. I would honestly be really happy rocking that armor set almost no matter what class I would play. It does kind of look like it would suit a mage the best, though. The last race we're going to look at is the High Mountain Tauren. These chaps had so much help from us during Legion, but apparently we still need to prove that the Horde is worthy of their allegiance, just like the Nightborn. I wonder what makes them so special to demand so much of us. Let's start by checking out their racials. Rugged Tenacity reduces all damage taken by 330, which might sound really low, but remember we're going to have a stat squish going into Battle for Azeroth, so that might actually be really powerful, especially for tanks. 
Pride of Ironhorn increases your mining skill by 15 and allows you to mine faster, which is pretty awesome. Mountaineer increases your versatility by 1%. Bull Rush allows you to knock down all enemies in front of you for 1.5 seconds. It's like an AoE mini stun, which could be very powerful in Mythic Plus. And Waste Not, Want Not gives you an extra chance to loot additional meat and fish. So for all you fishermen out there, it might be time to re-roll. The High Mountain Tauren are all about their antlers and red tattoos, but they also have some unique druid forms. Each form is similar to the Tauren's druid forms, except they all have antlers. That means there's antlers on their cat form, antlers on their bear form, antlers on their flight form, but most importantly, they're actually a moose in their ground travel form. Some of them look a little daft, but for some of them it really works. High Mountain Tauren also get unique totem models, which look like the bird totems that the High Mountain were carrying around quite often. I'll give you a link to the Wowhead page just like the other ones, except there aren't really any customization shots for the High Mountain Tauren, so we might have to wait a little longer on those. The Wowhead dressing room is working for High Mountain Tauren, but there's only like three options for skin tones and horn style, so it's nowhere near complete. The dressing room background is a shot of High Mountain, which makes a lot of sense. The racial mount that the High Mountain Tauren will gain access to is the High Mountain Thunderhoof, which is, you guessed it, a moose. You're a moose who can ride a moose or turn into a moose if you're a druid. How fantastic is that? The High Mountain Tauren heritage set is probably some of the best Tauren gear I've ever seen. You have a kind of typical druid look with the leathers and furs and the headdress, but also those huge totems on your back which Tauren players have been asking for since Vanilla WoW. You finally get some proper totems as part of your armor. It's just a shame you'll have to be a High Mountain Tauren to actually use them. And that's all the info we have about the allied races in patch 735 so far. I really hope we can create these races before Battle for Azeroth. That would also be a really smart way to keep us a little busy during the typical content drop between the last raid and the next expansion. Fingers crossed for allied races soon. But that's it for this video. What do you think of the allied races so far? Have you picked a race that you're going to play for Battle for Azeroth? Leave all your thoughts and theories in the comment section below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.